Right, shall we make sure that when the staff source by giving all praise to Yahweh by Shem Yahushai? The belongs to the Apostle GMS and honors to you brothers that are doing the work in truth and my sincerity. So I'm going to do a real quick one. Uh, you earlier on was at the tube station, uh, you know, the metro as you'd call it in the States, over in London. And basically, Giz just left his, uh, you know, he left his suitcase in the middle of the forecourt. And, and you know, the, the station staff, you know, the lady was getting absolutely, you know, you could see that she was getting anxious. And then she told the guy, oh, say, oh, don't be leaving shit. Hey, don't be leaving shit alone. Don't do that shit, basically. And then you'd be hearing sirens, you know, and a series of sirens going on above. And immediately, you, you know, you just know everyone's thinking, shit, is it another attack? Is it another attack? Everyone, everyone's tense. You know, you've got the tension in the air. But what they don't understand is you know, all these things are orchestrated. And really and truly, things are going to get a lot worse right until it gets better. Right, uh, so this is Revelation 12 and 12, and by better I mean the children of Israel be in power. It says Revelation 12 and 12 says, Therefore rejoice ye heavens and ye that dwell in them, woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil eats with the so called white man has come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. Right, so he's all seeing all of these prophecies come to pass, he's thinking, God damn, oh shit, alright, Revelation 11 is, is, is really coming to pass. You know, these Israelites are really put getting their flesh back on their bones, uh, pursuing to uh, was it, Ezekiel 37, right? So he's going to come down hard. He's going to come down hard, man. So it's Jeremiah 30 and 7 says, Alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it. So you pick that apart, right? So, you know, uh, it says, so that none is like it. So it's a day. Uh, when you read Daniel's 12, and let me let me read that before I finish that off, says, and at that time shall Mark stand up, the great prince which stand, Daniel's 12 and 1, says, uh, the great prince which standeth for the children of thy people, and there shall be a time of trouble, such as never was since there was a nation, even to the same time. But he's saying, yo, this day, what's going to happen, is, yo, it's going to be like nothing that's happened before. Right, which is why also in Jeremiah 16 and 14, it says, um, no longer shall it be said, Yahweh, who brought the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt, but out of the land of the north, i.e. America. That's how great this salvation is going to be. Right? It's going to eclipse, you know, the 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 uh, uh, the uh, what you call it, the deliverance from Egypt, right? From old Egypt, anyway. Right? So it says uh, back in Jeremiah 30 and 7, it says, "Alas, that day is great, so that none is like it." It is even the time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it. Ultimately, the elect are going to be saved. And that is where the hope comes in. Right? So you see, you know, you've got all of these people out there that are scared. They're absolutely scared because they don't know what's going to happen next. But this is why this scripture really is so deep. It says Isaiah 33 and 6 says, And wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times and strength of salvation. You know, the fear of the Lord is his treasure. The fear of Yahweh is his treasure. All right, so as, you, as I was saying, you know, you get all these people that are absolutely scared. They don't they don't know when the next attack's going to happen. They don't know this, they don't know that. But all those of us in the truth that are in the know, know that all of these things are staged. And that ultimately this is a, a much bigger war. A spiritual war for one, but soon it's going to get physical. Uh, pursuing, uh, you, know, to, you know, to several scriptures really. Right, this being one of them, Revelation 12 being another, Ezekiel 21 and 9 being another. Right, East was going to start coming down real hard, but we know that we're going to, this bit here, he shall be saved out of it. You know that if you please the Lord, you're going to be I. You're going to be cool. Unless, you know, you, it's, it's just your lot to, you know, to be a master for this truth. But the Apostle said, Mo, this time around, most of us won't, you know, a hand, only a handful of us will have to have to give up, lay down our lives. All right, so this is Second Timothy one and seven. This is uh, for the Most High hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Right, you know you, you'll get times when you feel a certain way, but then you've got to refer back to these scriptures. You know that there's a process that has to take part. Uh, you know there, there's a process that has to be fulfilled. You know, all, all of the scriptures have to come to pass, so you just stick it out, say, hey, it is what it is, right? You know that, you know, uh, Proverbs 18 and 10, for instance, 
the name of the Lord is a strong tower and the righteous one that into it and it's safe. So no matter what you do, you know that hey, if I just maintain, uh, you know, in in in, uh, in these scriptures and this truth and remember the name of the Lord, then you know I'm a, I'm a, I'm a bi, right? This is uh, Matthew ten eighteen, and ye shall be brought before governors and kings for my sake for testimony against them and the Gentiles. Right now, I bring this out because in the recent attacks over here, you know, they were just straight gunning for brothers. They were straight gunning for brothers, right? Trying to, you know, I, I won't get into how they're doing so, but brothers, hey, hey, we know there was, you know, several indirects, right? Uh, <laughs> but, and, and it's like, and that's, that time is going to come, but if you ain't rooted in the faith, if you ain't down in the faith, then that spirit of fear will overcome you and you'll give in. You'll give in to Esau. You won't be dwelling on the scripture, you won't be dwelling on your foundation, that would keep you strong in these times. You won't, you know, be remembering the scriptures, wisdom, and the knowledge. You won't be stable, right? And this is, you know, this is going to happen to some of us. But the scriptures say what it says, but when they deliver you up, take no thought how or what you shall speak. Basically, don't don't have fear. Just go in the spirit, for it shall be given you in that same hour what you shall speak. For it is not you, ye that speak. But the spirit of your father which speaketh in you. Right? Because when you understand, yo, everything's the spirit and the Lord, you know, whatever's going to happen is going to happen. It's all down to the Lord. Then immediately you, you stop worrying so much. You stop fearing. You say, hey, it's all in the spirit. I'm going to just do what I got to do. You know, and the Lord will guide my steps. The Lord wants me to go through this. Wants to go through that. Then it's cool. Right? And then John 16 and 2 says, they shall put you out of the synagogues. Yea, the time cometh. That whosoever killeth you will think that he doeth the most high service, right? And I bring this out as well, once as well, because you could also go understand what you're in. At the end of the day, there are people out there that want to kill you, and you you got these guys I U I C, you know, all of these other camps, you know, they they they, they want to get rid of us, man. Right, but it's having this understanding. Because, okay, once you know this, but having the understanding that most is going to take care of you, if that says, well, either, either, no matter what your end is, the most is going to take care of you if you're the elect. You know, then these things don't make you scared. These things just make you think, hey, man, hey, it's to fulfill prophecy. All of the prophets that got killed, that was to fulfill prophecy. Hey, look at Paul. When he was doing what he was doing, he thought he was doing the most high service, but then he he, he learned otherwise. Like, Yo, man, I'm going off. He repented of his ways and he did what he had to do, which was teach his truth. Right, so like, it's just to wrap up, it's, you know, a thing about, it was, you know, it was, I know I covered several different aspects of it, right? There's a, you know, there's, there's fear that the people in the world be fear, be feeling, there's fear that we might have to go through, but the, the, the main message is remember what you're in, remember what's prophesied, and let that be a strong foundation. Because if you remember the bad stuff, i.e. this, i.e. the fact that there are people out there that are going to try to kill you, that are going to try and, and, and actually think that they're doing it for the good. Right, if, if you know all of this, then you also got to remember all of the other scriptures. Friends of scriptures uh, talk about some will be beheaded for this truth, the revelations. But then it also says the dead in Yahushua shall rise first. So then what have you got to fear? Second Maccabees 7 actually is, is, is a good one on this because you know the, the, the brothers were being you know being put to death in some gruesome ways. But they they was just like, hey man, I'ma come back in the next life, man. It's no biggie. It is what it is. Right, so you know, look through all of that. You are the Father, Messiah, Shalom.